This is Aviv and Jared from West Coast Shaving and today we're going to talk to you about shaving soaps and creams, some terms and the differences between them. We've got a couple different options here. We've got a cream that we're going to go over that we'll just show you at the outset here. Right, it is much like a, a rich cream that you're going to end up scooping a little bit out and today we're going to lather inside this little mug. I've got a soap for sure that's I would say medium hard. And what I mean by that is you can you can push it down but it's definitely not anything that you're meant to scoop. If you try scooping it it'll kind of break apart on you. Um, you know it doesn't spread it or anything like that and so you're either gonna have to scoop it out, mush it into a bowl or a mug and then lather it or just lather right inside the tub here. And Aviv you've got an entirely different little beast there. This is a hard soap. It's like a, what, you, what, what you might think of as like a bath soap. Yeah. Um, hard. Some of these usually have this consistency. I don't know if this one is specifically, but you, you, you hear the term triple milled, mm -hmm. which means that it's been processed. It becomes a really hard soap. It, it lasts a little bit longer. It lasts longer. It's harder to, you know, it can, it can take a little more work uh, to loosen up the surface of, of the soap there to lather. Um, but the scent in those triple milled, for example, is... Uh, mix and all the ingredients are mixed three times to make uniformity. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, in general, you can create an awesome, awesome lather from any of these. And really, there are some um, just different attributes about them. Uh, we're also uh, not going to get too much into the different properties today, but they have different ingredients um, where we can do the big ones, right? Vegan. So no animal products in it, or tallow, meaning that there is some kind of animal fat usually as an ingredient. Here, uh, this Euphros, for example, says premium tallow right on it. Not every Euphros soap is a tallow-based soap, but this one happens to be. And in contrast, this Tobbs Taylor Will Bond Street is a vegan cream. Uh, I think Dr. Harris is also a vegan cream, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and just soaps and creams in general, they're created with a fat and a lye. That's uh, the process of making soap. Uh, so a vegan soap might be palm oil or some sort of other vegetable oil. Um, and a tallow-based is using animal fat as the fat in the fat plus lye equation. Um, and a lot of these soaps and creams are adding different properties like cocum butter or you know, shea butter to uh, to enhance the the lather in a way where it can nourish your skin mm -hmm. or clay might dry your skin a little That's bit right. you know different yep. different pro things that can be added to the soap to enhance the lather or or make the lather for a specific type of user and i think uh, in general you can uh, find soaps that have creams and soaps that have uh, minimal ingredients, a lot of ingredients. Uh, there's going to be a difference, of course, in, um, with with um, some creams. You can get away with very, very little product in a way that uh, typically uh, I've, I find I can never get away with so little soap. But uh, I'm often impressed by just how little cream it takes uh, to create an awesome multi-pass lather. Right. So over here we have, like Jared said, a cream, a soap, and a really hard soap. Right. Uh, and everything that we have, you're going to need a brush to create the lather with. It's right. not something that's brushless. It's right. not like a foam or something like that. It's still something that requires a brush to create the lather. It's just the different uh, forms that it's in. Right. Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. What do you want to use? Um, uh, I will use some tops today. Okay. Uh, and this is the cream. And so... Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll try the DR Harris. And yeah. so we can show like the the difference yeah. in, no, it's, in the... That's good. Uh, you know, I find that to lather the triple mill types or the hard puck types, it's helpful to even stick some water on top and let it, what's called, bloom for a little bit. Mm. Though some people definitely don't like that uh, approach. Uh, it's one that works for me, though. And this is in, uh, the Art Harris has these like wood containers mm -hmm. that it's just a, a soap puck inside of it. So this is is even a generous amount of product to use. Uh, I could get away with probably half this, but you know, 
it's already on my finger. And I'm sitting here, I'm just trying to work the the soap to get it loaded onto the brush to get enough of the product off the soap right. onto the brush. But it's working out nicely. Yeah. Did you wring that out? I did a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because I, I mean, there still must be a ton of water in there. It's pretty impressive. Uh, and I'm just going to soak the tips of mine here. Any other terms you can think of, like while we're while we're doing this? Um, I mean, it, you know, in general, and it's not at all dependent on soap or cream, but um, you know, some uh, brands have more scent strength, uh, or certain types of scents are stronger across brands. Uh, I feel like um, the Euphros, this particular tubs, it's like medium, medium strong scent strength, whereas I feel like that. Uh, Dr. Harris Lavender is more medium, maybe even light. Yeah, I feel like the the traditional brands they they skew a little bit more towards like a mass audience, a right. little bit more of a light fragrance, something that not necessarily an enthusiast would would uh, yeah. appreciate. It's just like someone the mass people would appreciate, because I mean I, I mentioned earlier, but Parasso is yeah. is like is the the shave brand that you find in the like the Dwayne Reed of, right. of Italy. It's right. all over the pharmacies in Italy. So it's not, it's not, I don't need more, but uh, <laughs> it's not, uh, I'm gonna lather my hand, my, look, my look face. I've got, I've got a little, uh, little, little rim uh, action going on there. Yeah, my face. <laughs> we lather, this is <laughs> lather number 25 for the day. Exactly. My face needs a little bit of a break. Um, yeah, so they're 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 more for a mass audience. Uh, these European brands that right. that we, you know, this is well, I think that the I would say uh, they're for everyone, but the U.S. artisans have um, like really pursued uh, creative fragrances in a way that um, you know a lot of the traditional uh, European brands just haven't. You know, they've left that perhaps more for the perfumers and. Um, and don't look to their shave soap to uh, be carrying the scent nearly as much as a lot of the U.S. artisans have, have concentrated on. Yeah, and I, I mean, I personally prefer prefer the like the lighter, more classic scents. It's just like more for me. Um, so yeah. hey, that's you... probably your best lather. Oh, so look at you! It's funny. I was telling my sister-in-law she's a big cooker. And a baker, and uh, a candlestick maker. Right. <laughs> and she uh, was talking to her about stiff peaks, like uh -huh. you know, stiff peaks are traditionally like an egg white meringue kind of <laughs> right. term. Right. And you talk about it with shave soap, like look at the stiff peaks on right. the shave soap. She saw that in a video. She's like, "Have you? What, <laughs> what are you going? What on? have you gotten yourself into? Look at this. Look yeah. At that, look at that peak. Um, all of this, as we said, you can get great." Performance, great peaks from from all of it. Yeah, look at you, man. You're really dialing it in. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a great lather. Yeah. Um, and like Jared said, the you could probably use a little bit of water with hard these hard soaps, and because this badger just holds a lot of water, it does able to release some water as I lather. Right. Um, some folks, uh, when they're using those harder uh, traditional soaps, uh, prefer to use a bore brush because the, the bore is a little bit rougher texture at the tips, um, and the, the fibers are a little hardier, and so it allows you to really dig into the soap without meaning to, without actually trying to scratch the soap. Uh, it, it can be more efficient when you're loading the brush from those kind of pucks. Yeah, and so, I don't know if you guys noticed, I mean, Jared was able to build the leather much more quickly than I was, even though he's still doing it. Uh, the lather was coming off of the side of the bowl like right. in no time. Um, this took a little bit longer to to make, but, but it's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Okay. And uh, one of the things I don't know. Do we have any? Maybe we can talk about the terminology within the within the lather itself. Sure. Um, like slickness. Yeah. A uh, cushion. So so a bunch of um, hobbyists. I guess you would say if you're looking at further wet shave videos, um, you'll often see folks playing with their lather. 
um, especially to talk about the attributes. And so I'm going to try to do the same here, but finally have a reason for doing so. Um, and basically, you can, this is certainly not a method that I invented at all, but I, I think it, it makes good sense. You take your lather here, um, you, can, you can kind of investigate a couple of different properties. So going like this, you can tell how much force it takes to smush it together, whether that collapses right away, so to speak, or there's some uh, resistance there. This has definitely some decent resistance, and that's generally what we call cushion. Mm -hmm. So if this were a, a blade gliding along your face, you can see that it's going to take a lot for it to, you know, to kind of really drag that blade against your skin. And, and that's good. That's protection for you. Another attribute, of course, is slickness. And that has to do with just going like this. And so you can get a good feel for, is this the kind of thing that glides as easily as could be, or is there some, you know, stickiness to it, pastiness right. um, that will manifest, you know, when you're, when you're shaving. Like, would you want to use this on a slip and slide or not? I have, and yes. <laughs> um, that's a good, that's a good test. That's a good test. Uh, yeah. Man, look at you. Proud of you, Aviv. Thanks. Proud of you. You have a future in this business. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, cushion, slickness, we... Post-shave is, is really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, it's harder to talk about with a bunch of uh, putty in your hands, but generally, post-shave has to do with after... It, it could start like, really right after your shave, but especially over the next you know a series of hours, how uh, protected, uh, nourished, pampered your skin feels. Um, so a lot of the uh, more premium ingredient shaves have additives specifically to leave your skin feeling almost, if you don't nick yourself, better than before you shaved, which is incredible. What are, do you know some of the ingredients that might do that? Um, well... No pressure. <laughs> God, I can't think. Uh, first, there's a lot of, of lore about tallow being the, the like key ingredient to getting that kind of uh, luxurious poche feel. I will tell you, uh, I do not feel like that is the absolute truth, but it is often correlated with a great poche. Mm. There are some outstanding vegan options though that really can deliver just as well. Um, but I guess if you're deciding between two and you're not otherwise concerned about vegan tallow, tallow is probably gonna have a bit better poche generally. Um, in my experience. Uh, there, there are all sorts of butters uh, that are, are taken to like shea butter, whatever butters, coconut butter, right, that um, do help with that a lot. I feel like some of the soaps that have clays in them uh, can be kind of uh, calming uh, to the skin, calming uh, if there's some irritation, if there's any kind of oily skin, um, the clay tends to dry it out nicely. Uh, but not everyone, you know, would benefit from that. Uh, and then uh, there are some, like we have uh, grooming department soaps experiment with different tallows. The idea being that they perform and might contribute to different poche feel. We also have um, some uh, you know, duck fats from oleo and, and grooming department. We have uh, donkey milk as an additive from holy cow and grooming department. Um, that are all in, in various ways designed to add to that poche feel and uh, deliver certain different vitamins and nutrients to the skin. So I think I think I think that covers the majority of the terms and the basics. I think I don't know if we want to go into it now, but scent is a big thing. You know, within these shave soaps, like you, there's barbershop scents, there's sandalwood scents. Yep. And, Understanding those scents, I think, is an important thing. It is, um, but that that really, I think, takes starts to differentiate these soaps and creams. Like, what are you looking for in a cream yeah. as far as a scent profile for when you shave? Mm -hmm. And like, I personally, I don't like something that stays with me for a very long time. Yeah, I like something that kind of very short amount of time and then it's gone. Like, it's only it's like part of my shave, the scent of my shave. Not necessarily I want to smell like rose for 24 <laughs> hours. Come on, more than 24. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I tend to like a longer-lasting scent. Um, 
but obviously if, only if it's a good one. But yeah, I don't, I don't mind a, a scent that I really like lasting a longer time. So I think that's everything yeah. between soaps and creams and and terms and differences and lather always. <laughs> always lather. <laughs> mess, mess, mess. Uh, thanks for watching this video and we'll see you see again. See you guys soon.